write the general solution to the non-homogeneous equation in a parametric vector form, and then use this solution to write the solution set of the corresponding homogeneous equation. And now, looking at our given system here, we can really appreciate that this is a non-homogeneous equation if we rewrite this in its matrix equation form. So we have our coefficient matrix, 2, negative 6, 0. We have 2, negative 6, negative 5, and then 4, negative 12, negative 5. So that is matrix A multiplied by the vector, vector x and r3, so the vector with three entries, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, and this is equal to the constant vector b, 8, negative 24, 15. So here is our matrix equation, that non-homogeneous equation, matrix A times vector x equals some constant vector b. Now, we want to find the general solution vector to the system. So solving for the general solution vector is the same method, the same strategy that we saw with homogeneous equations. So to get us started, we are going to row reduce the augmented matrix. So here is one difference. We're going to row reduce the augmented matrix. So that's matrix A augmented with vector B to row reduced echelon form. And as always, we will pause for a cause when we hit echelon form to make some observations about what's going on. So here we go. We have the coefficient matrix, or the augmented matrix. 2, negative 6, 0. 2, negative 6, negative 5. And then 4, negative 12, negative 5. And we are augmenting this with the constant vector, vector b, which is 8, negative 24, 15. So looking at this augmented matrix, we realize that we can simplify each row. So let's think about this. We could do a scalar multiple of 1 half times the first row. We can multiply the second row by a scalar multiple of negative 1 sixth. And we could multiply the third row by a scalar multiple of negative 1 fifth. So doing all three of these scalar simplifications simultaneously, but very carefully, caref carefully, we are left with 1, 1, 2, 4 in the first row. In the second row, we are left with 1, 1, 2, 4. And in the third row, we are left with 0, 1, 1, minus 3. Beautiful. So, looking at the first pivot position, we want to use that pivot to eliminate the entry below it. So we can see here, if we do minus the first row plus the second row, we will attain the new and reduced second row. So this leaves us with, we have the same first row, 1, 1, 2, 4. Now with the second row, notice that the first and second row are the same. So if we subtract the first row from the second row, the second row becomes all zeros. And then our third row is still 0, 1, 1, negative 3. So our first row is all set. Now, in order to have echelon form, whether it's echelon form or row reduced echelon form, rows of zeros need to be at the bottom. So let's interchange the second row with the third row. So this leaves us with the equivalent augmented matrix 1, 1, 2, 4, 0, 1, 1, negative 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. And hey, would you look at this? We have echelon form. Woohoo! So in attaining echelon form, we know that our system is consistent and a solution it certainly exists. Now also notice our third pivot position is 0. So this is indicating to us that x sub 3 is a free variable. And we know that this system is still consistent because both sides of our third equation here are equal to 0. So we don't have a contradiction. This holds true. 
So let's continue with our simplification process here. We are looking back up at our second pivot position, and we want to use this to eliminate the entry above it. So to do that, we'll do minus the second row plus the first row to attain the new and reduced first row. So making sure we have plenty of room. We are left with the system. We have zero plus one is one, negative one plus one is zero, negative one plus two is one, and then positive three plus four is seven. And then our second row is still zero, one, one, negative three, and the third row is all zeros. And so we have attained row reduced echelon form, hip hip hooray, and we can rewrite this in the equivalent format. Writing it just as it is, we can see that the first row reads as x sub 1 plus x sub 3 is equal to 7. The second row reads as x sub 2 plus x sub 3 is equal to negative 3. And now we can take this and we'll use it to write our general solution. So we want to write the general solution vector x. So to write that general solution vector x, we want to rewrite or describe our basic variables, x sub 1 and x sub 2, in terms of the free variable, x sub 3. So solving this, we have x sub 1 is equal to 7 minus x sub 3. We have that x sub 2 is equal to negative 3 minus x sub 3. And then we'll indicate here that x sub 3 is free. So we can now translate this to our solution vector, vector x, which we know is a vector in R3. So you have the arbitrary vector in R3 with three entries, x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3. And using what we just found, we know that x sub 1 is 7 minus x sub 3. We know that x sub 2 is described as negative 3 minus x sub 3. And x sub 3 is free, so it is just itself. And as always, be careful to line up those like terms. And if it helps, you can incorporate those ghost zeros as your placeholders. Because those are going to be important as we decompose this vector. So we need a little bit more room here. So having these terms lined up like this makes the decomposition of our solution set a little easier to see. We can see we have the constant vector 7, negative 3, 0, plus the vector with the parameter x sub 3. So that's the column vector minus x sub 3, minus x sub 3, x sub 3. And last but not least, we want to rewrite this in its parametric vector form. And we're almost there. We can now officially say that our solution set vector x is the constant vector or particular solution, 7, negative 3, 0, plus the parameter x sub 3, your free variable, multiplied by the, the scalar valued vector, the vector whose entries are constants, negative 1, negative 1, 1. And this is such that x sub 3 is our parameter, the real number. And so this is it. This is our beautiful final answer for the parametric vector form of the solution set to our homo non-homogeneous equation. Now, this question is also asking us to now use this solution set to find the solution set of the corresponding homogeneous equation. So again, this is the parametric vector for the non-homogeneous equations solution set. And if we think back to the definition, we know that the solution set for a non-homogeneous equation is described as the particular solution, vector p, plus any solution to that corresponding homogeneous equation. 
So this vector V sub H is any solution to the homogeneous equation matrix A times vector X equals the zero vector. So we can see here that the solution to the homogeneous equation is the linear combination or all possible scalar multiples of the constant vector negative 1, negative 1, 1. So we can say that therefore the solution set to the corresponding homogeneous equation is the set of all scalar multiples of the constant vector negative 1, negative 1, 1, or x sub 3 multiplied by that constant vector. And again, this is such that x sub 3 is any scalar our little hearts desire. And so this is our beautiful final answer.